Hi everyone! Today I'm going to be sharing with you this Christmas journal. I've been working on two bigger ones. Uh, last week, I think it was, I did a quick flip through. Maybe it was two weeks ago. I did a quick flip through of a smaller one I had made, but this is one of the major ones I've been working on. Today I'm going to share this one with you, and then on Friday I will go ahead and share the other one with you, and that way the videos won't be super long. If you're new to my channel, my name's Marcy, this is Creator's Call, and you found me here on YouTube. And if you are one of my wonderful viewers who's returning, thank you so much and welcome back. So like I said, this is a Christmas journal. I was working with a 70s inspired theme. This journal has a few special elements. I've used as many 70s items as I have on hand and as I could find. And then where I didn't have actual authentic things from the 70s, I tried to pull something in that would give it that same feeling. Now, I did do something a little bit different with this one, which I will talk about in just a minute. Let's go ahead and get yourselves comfy or get yourselves ready to craft while I share with you. And we'll be back right after this. You will notice that the cover of this journal, I kept it kind of simple, kind of plain. I didn't over decorate. If I had had like a small uh, snowflake kind of thing about that size, I probably would have added it here, but I didn't. I do just like the simplicity though of the plaid trim and this 70s, um, I think it's probably from the 70s, the package was pretty old. Rick rack. I did include a lot of rick rack because nothing says 70s like rick rack and pom poms. And so you will see some of that in this journal. One of the things I did was I removed almost all of these tabbed page dividers. Instead, I used them and traced them on cardstock, double sided cardstock, and made the cardstock pieces into the tabbed pages. I guess I didn't really need to trace this part, but I wanted to, so it was all one piece. I could have just done it straight and then used my tab punch to punch coordinating tabs for each one, but I didn't. I didn't even think of that till just now. So these, I think there's just one at the back, and then there's one that I covered towards the front, but other than that, these are not in there, and most of the pages I removed except for the ones that added to the feel or had something of special interest on them. Now the other thing I did as I was going along, I kind of really started getting more steam yesterday and today, these last two days that I've been working on it. And today, as I was putting my final touches on it, I got a wild hair. I'm really excited about this. So what I did was I took some 70s patterns that I have. I only have three. And I figured out that my my Apple Mac, when you scan an image will and you convert it to a JPEG, it will ret uh, remove the background. It changes it to a PNG file. But I can scan things and then tell it to remove the background so I get just the image. And so that's what I did. I scanned some of these images from the fronts of my 70s patterns, uh, pattern envelopes, and put them on the sheet. And so I used them in here. So that was something really fun. It did take me on like a one and a half to two hour detour, but at the end of the day, I really think that helped and I'm super excited that they're in there. So that was a really fun, really fun element that I came up with. Now you saw me last week add these pockets. I did go back and add the Rick Rack. Now I'm hearing rumors in the junk journal world uh, about a couple of things regarding flip throughs. One I heard recently is that people don't really like flip through videos and I would like to know why that is because the whole purpose of doing the flip through is so that you can see what's in the journal and to present the journal uh, you know the pictures only tell so much so you get a better feel for how the journals look. The only reason I can really come up with is that maybe they're just too long maybe people don't like them and maybe we over explain when we're sharing. I personally prefer the explanation because sometimes you don't show the entire process in a video. And so then I have the explanation of why the person did what they did or why they included what they included or if it was something special where it came from. That being said, I realize that then they can get quite lengthy. My last one where I presented two journals, 
was over an hour long. So, I mean, I get that. So my, my second question is, what do you guys prefer? Do you want more explanation or less just to flip through without talking or, you know, without much talking? Or do you want a little explanation as we go? Then that will really help me fine tune in the future as I continue to show and share the journals I've made on this channel. So anyway, please leave that in the comments down below. Just let me know, do you like a lengthier one? More explanation, less explanation, just show me what you got. How do you prefer? And, and if you don't like flip through videos at all, please let me know your thinking on that because I'm curious to find out why that would be and um, what would you offer up as an alternative. So anyway, sorry, I just wanted to kind of put that out there before I start because I've been wondering and I don't want to bore you to tears for no good reason. So, okay, pockets that we worked on last week added the Rick Rack here on top, and I think that did the right thing. It just really helped trim them out. There's one in the front and one in the back, and basically I just put in here some random pieces that I didn't include in the journal, but that I had pulled out to use. There's um, a blank note card here that looks kind of 70s, and in both pockets I included the remainder of the 70s wrapping paper that I used in a couple of spots. And then this one has, um, it's actually a duplicate of like a Miss Manners around the house kind of a book with all the little housekeeping tips. I thought that was fun. So you see that in the back as well. And then also I had this page that I wasn't sure where to include and it wound up not getting included. So I just tucked it back here the giant recipe, and um, here's the other piece of wrapping paper. So I'm just sending those along with the journal because I did intend to use them in this journal, and so I really don't anticipate needing to use these later on down the road. So the title page has a card, and I liked the colors. It's not particularly 70s looking, but I did love the colors. Inside, you watched when I made a pocket to cover up the sentiment, and today I got the wild idea to also, not only did I make my pattern, uh, sewing pattern ladies, but I also went ahead and stamped some fabric and added little fabric elements. Uh, so you'll see those as we go throughout. I glued it on as a pocket. There is a scrap of paper here and then a quote that has to do with Christmas tucked behind. I added lots of laces and things to give it the right look. This is something that I found in an old cookbook and it's actually from 1981, Women's Day, and these are vegetarian specialties. Overall, this journal is more like, um, more of the cookbook feeling and with journal included and Christmas elements. So I did include a lot of recipes. Here's um, all of these little pieces like this are actual 70s gift tags and you'll see Denison stickers and things like that too so um, like I said where I could I just added the parts that made it feel like a 70s or that were authentic 70s got a label here from a soft drink and here's the poem that we did last last time um, I just went ahead and added an embellishment here and I just have a couple pieces here. Love the vintage thermos there, that retro, retro inspired thermos on the flash card. And I pulled in pages from other cookbooks and craft books and Christmas books, all kinds of things just to give it the 70s feeling. I love this. I also left some of these divider pages blank. Some of them I went ahead and decorated, some of them I left blank because I figured you might want to add your own things, and so I didn't want to over decorate it. Now I love this page here, and also where I could, when the picture was pretty, I also included the, um, the recipe with it. So this one, they were printed on the same page as well as this one, isn't that cool? I don't know if I mentioned this, yet in this video, but I believe I mentioned it before I started. This is a 1970s cookbook, so really enjoyed that. Some of these scraps of vintage wrapping paper I either used as decoration. Um, there's one spot where I included my extra piece in the pocket. Popovers, my mom used to make popovers all the time. 
Here I have this vintage pom-pom trim, and I, I was dying to use that, so I was really glad I found a place to do that. And we've got um, a variety of pages, so there's music pages, plant cards, um, all kinds of things, as you'll see. This picture here of the donuts, I believe, is this, and I love that the person who owned it wrote very good, so I left that page in. And of course, no Christmas album or Christmas cookbook is complete without fruitcake, some kind of fruitcake recipe. Now this just folds out, and I went ahead, This I cut this out of another Christmas book and just glued it on here, put a little thingy up in the, um, up in this hole here. I used a whole reinforcer so it wouldn't tear out. This is just a top tuck, and I just slid a couple things in there. Another vintage recipe card, which are in my Etsy shop. I have lots of different kinds, so please head on over there and help me to dispose of them and get them in your hands. There is a sale happening. It will continue to happen through the end of the year, <laughs> so I really wanted to clean things out. Okay, this is a quilted pocket I made, and some of these are old vintage sheet pieces or um, just old fabrics. Definitely gives that 70s vibe and then I just layered up a couple pieces on it. And then this recipe was one that I had written out when I was probably in high school. This is an authentic 1970s recipe card. <laughs> well, I wasn't in high school in the 70s. I was in high school in the early 80s, but my handwriting would indicate. But I know that the um, recipe card is that old. Here's another one of these old um, recipe cards. This one's from 1971, but I love the, the look on the picture and how it looks like the holidays. And then on this particular, um, in this particular pocket, I took this lady and cut her out. So I just tucked her in the pocket because I think she looks so cute. And I know I had mentioned last week about um, pictures of my mom in her bathrobe, and that's definitely, <laughs> this lady is modeling her bathrobe. So, you know, Christmas Day is not complete unless your mom is in her bathrobe in all of the family photos. Johnny Appleseed Cake, and there's the recipe. And then to tie in on this page, I have a little game card or playing card with an apple, and the worm is making applesauce. This is an authentic 70s recipe card. I went ahead and hinged it because it did have lines on the back and just layered it over this piece of wrapping paper. Um, a lot of these pages are from children's books from the 70s. And here's a vintage ad. And then I also have a few pages from this particular book, another children's book from the 70s. I just think it's so cute. The illustrations, the colors, it definitely said 70s to me. This one is all layered up. There's another uh, recipe card and then I just layered it in here. This was a handwritten one in a cookbook I found at the thrift store. So pickled beets. I love pickled beets. And then a vintage uh, or an actual authentic 70s postcard. Boy, my words. I also added a few uh, spots with velvet trim because the 70s, you know, there's a lot of velvet and velour. <laughs> so track suits. Remember track suits? Anyway, I uh, used this index card and it folds out so I left it like that and just stamped on the inside. Love the colors here and the images. And then in this particular pocket, I was going to glue these ladies on, but I just like them how they are. So I just tucked them in. Another authentic 70s recipe card came out of my recipe box. I went through um, a couple years ago and cleaned out a bunch of recipes that I knew I'd never make. So you get the benefit. This one is just a photo processing envelope. There's nothing in it. And then this is technically more like 80s or 90s, but the colors make me think 70s. So it made its way in. It's just a trifold trifold piece of stationery that should go through your printer. And then I just love having these little ladies peek out the top like that. This one has cookies to tie in with this page here. And then I'm especially fond of this particular element here. So this is one of our uh, photo mailers like we used to have. Um, I liked the gold foil and inside I tucked an authentic 70s Christmas card. Now, you take this out of the rings and then you can open up and slide something else in there if you'd like. But in the meantime, it's all 
self-contained like this. So if you want to change that out, you just need to pop open the binder and, and remove this first. Here's a flash card. And then I had a couple places here where I wanted to include from um, the, the uh, index cards for your recipe box. And so I just took a couple of these ladies and, and uh, glued them on there. And then this is just a tag I made from an old Christmas card, but I like the sentiment on it. There's a children's craft book. And I love the aprons, didn't want to cover them up. I love the picture of this lady making breakfast for her family, for her four helpless men. I assume the baby's a boy. <laughs> it could be a girl, but I mean, it just seems like those are all guys over there, but I just loved this. Now in this pocket, here's another one of my sentiments I stamped on fabric. And another one of my images that I printed off from the patterns and I layered it up on this card. It was gonna be a pocket, but then I just had enough pockets. So turned it into a journal card instead. I backed it. And then I put these little cutie patooties, which this is the piece that gave me the idea to uh, scan them in and resize them and all of that. So it's kind of like, you know, going down the rabbit hole. So we've got scraps. We have an authentic SNH green stamp book. Uh, the only SNH stamps I have are very few, so I glued a little, you know, square of them up here. But I don't have any that have the stamps in the book already, so it's an empty book. So you can do with that what you will, but again, 70s. They kind of um, petered out somewhere around the 70s, in the 70s, the SNH green stamp books. Oh, I wanted to point out this too, this craft card, which I also have these in my Etsy shop listed below. Um, but the owls, very 70s. If I could have found um, mushrooms, I would have included more mushrooms. <laughs> I just love this. So you have the instructions for how to make that little guy if you're interested. Or you can turn it into a journal card or something. Um, I also would have loved to have had a Polaroid and included a Polaroid in here, but I don't have any. And I... Um, thought I might have had some that were made already, but I didn't. Now on this one, I think you watched me decorate up the envelope last week. I found some of these uh, old, oh, these are not the trombone kind. They call them owl clips, but I don't think that's what we called them in the 70s. We just called them paper clips. So I tucked in a couple of random things here in the envelope. We trimmed that out last week. And then when you turn it over, when you flip this out, I just left these as a tuck, and so they've got a couple of 70s playing cards, and I accented it with a, with a poinsettia. So remembering that these slipped on one half on one side and one half on the other side. And I, you know, wanted to add that little authentic touch there. I mean, that's why I bought them. <laughs> Okay, I love this picture. This is the frozen lemon tort. There's the recipe. And no cookbook would be complete without pies, pie instructions. And here's a delicious looking pie from a different cookbook. And these are from the 80s, but they're all, you know, basically they just reprinted them in different formats. This is just a random scrap, um, like from a six by six pad, but the pattern says 60s or 70s to me. And so I just, um, glued these ladies on here. I like how the colors all tied together. And here's one of those all through the house pages with all your, your tips. Um, it was talk, this one talks about cleaning your oven and different things. Authentic Denison label. This is from a crochet book. And I loved using all of the trims and things. This is not vintage trim, but it has that velvet feel. It's flocked, and so it has the look and the color. And then this is authentic 70s trim. On this page, this is just from a photograph album. So I went ahead and covered the edge so that I could punch the holes the way I needed them to be. And then this is um, an authentic current card as well as this one, authentic vintage our 70s uh, Christmas card, isn't that the cutest? And then this was from some stuff I ordered a while back. I just slid this in there, it's not glued. So the scrap behind it is loose, and this is loose, but it talks about um, putting your Christmas tree lights up, so I liked that. Here's a 
authentic mailing label from the 70s. This is calligraphy paper that I folded over and then I have this orange slice which could be a tuck right here. I just didn't tuck anything into it. Here's the photograph strip and it was running into this ring so I just went ahead and punched right there where it was bumping so it'll lay flat for you. I love this wreath. That is very quintessential 70s, isn't it? It's the Helen Steiner Rice page. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. This was a last minute edition and it looks like it's trying to stick to the other page. Oh, whew. Okay. This reminds me of the Nordic style sweaters everybody was wearing. I just put that on there as a accent and then I have another one of these little pockets that I've that I made that this isn't old fabric but it feels like it and decorated up the page and tucked a couple things in. I think for me one of the most fun things is at the end when you're trying to uh, use out use up all the pieces that you had pulled together for the project is to tuck them into pockets so that the new owner can play with them and use them how they want. Now this came out of an old magazine and of course in 1970, will you be a successful fashion artist? And you could pretend like you were or the person was, this does open up, because these are artist drawings. These were not photographs of the models, these were artist renderings of the models. You could pretend that maybe this person who owned this book did become a successful fashion artist and maybe was the person who drew all of these images for the for the different companies. Love this, the fruit and nut bowl. And then we've got a few fun little things tucked into that pocket. This fabric is authentic 70s fabric from my mom's old sewing. Uh, she had a giant plastic tub uh, full of fabric scraps, and so I use them very sparingly. Uh, slide, because slides were big. Our family, we used to have family slideshows a lot. We loved it. And then here's another one of those pieces. On this one, I just made a giant envelope out of this piece of paper, because I love the images, very retro. I used... Um, an old Christmas tag as the closure. And then inside I just tucked a lot of scraps, a couple of pieces of lined paper, and things that whoever gets the journal can use um, in the journal. I'm gonna be careful on this page because it's gonna get stuck. But I liked the images of the canning and the pickles, um, but that was making too many pages. And I might need to go back and add some rings to that or some reinforcements to that page. So let me just mark that really fast. Okay, so what I did, because I liked that image and this image, but I didn't want extra pages, is I sewed them together. And then I had this ornament, and so I just hooked it on there like a giant charm. This is authentic. It went on a little crooked. It just kind of grabbed the page, and once it was on, there was no getting it off again without tearing things up. So I left it, but I like the image again. Um, this is an old current card, and then I just tuck this behind so that um, new owner can put it wherever they want. It's just an extra piece. It's kind of decorating the page, but you can use it however you want in the journal. There's this side. These are one of those trifold, and then I just have this uh, journal card that I stamped with the church. And here's Times Square. More of that velour trim. Love it. And this was a piece that was in with some laces I had ordered, but it definitely looks old. So I sewed it up, ruffled it, and um, used it to trim out the image from an Ideals magazine, I believe. Now, you saw me kind of put this together last week, but I added fringe. I added this up here. I used her as a decoration, added this piece, and then just used a couple scraps to make giant tags. Now you can either keep them as tags if you want, whoever gets this, or I just kind of made them very simple so you could instead cut them down and use the scraps uh, if you'd rather use them as scraps or something else in this journal, then you, you don't lose a lot of the um, 
paper if you wanted to trim it down differently. But I liked how they filled the pocket there and were oversized. Left it plain again. Love this. <laughs> this is a fun piece too. This coupon shopping list envelope it flips out and here's another, I think this is my last vintage Christmas card in here. There's Santa, and of course I stamped on this side, and I like how you can learn how to, um, you can learn economy, uh, you know, money-saving tips, and how to carve your meat, and all kinds of things. So this could be a tuck if you wanted it to, but again, I just left it the way it is. Wallpaper. And I just left that one plain too. There's a lot of journaling space in there. And then here we have... This is the last piece of the vintage wrapping paper. So I left it in there. It's kind of snug, so I don't want to pull it out. And this is a tag I made a while back with a, with a napkin, but I like the Rudolph image on it. Another one of those stamped fabric pieces. I think that these really finished off these squares very nicely. So I'm glad I got that idea today. And then here's some of that wrapping paper. This is actual vintage trim, which reminds me, I have a scrap of that left over I want to send along, so I need to pull that out. And then I like that this was all about outdoor cooking, so you have a couple of different um, recipe sources for that. I loved using these. I just cut them out of a book. And I also love this. This is very old and retro looking, but it's an address card. I couldn't find them at first, and then I was looking for something else. And yesterday, I think it was, and I found them tucked away with another project I wanted to work on, and so I was very excited to find those. Now, actually, this is uh, my favorite progression in this journal, is the door images, uh, the door swags, right? The decoration here, and then the book page says, G is my grandmother, I go to C. So maybe grandma has this hanging on her front door. And then you flip the page. Maybe grandma's reading you goodnight stories. So I had the miniature of this image, so I just glued it here because I thought that was cute. And here, this came out of a children's book. Um, and then here's the apron that we worked on. So I tucked it with um, another flashcard that definitely looks like a 70s stove. Looks like the one we had in our kitchen. And a tag I made and another um, like address memo pad thing. They're all tucked in there, but of course you could swap them out for whatever you want. And then um, another last minute idea, I had this little foam guy, and so I backed him on some paper so he looks like a toasted cookie. Now I typically, I don't know about you guys, I do not walk around with cookies in my apron pocket, but it was bothering me that her pocket was empty. I did add this pocket too, so I, we didn't do that last week, but I added this, I added the trim, and then I put another little gingerbread man down here with the no peeking. So I really, I like how this turned out. I think that's super cute. And that feels like what grandma might be wearing. This is uh, from one of the pages in the cookbook. I just glued it on here to make it look interesting. And then I had a leftover strip, but I like how the checkers echo the checked tablecloth there. And I love this recipe with the little vintage Rudolph there and, and the um, tiered Christmas tree tray. And then here's the second one of those little cards I had. It talks about how to fix your dripping candles, which might be a problem. Well, we know we had these problems on the holidays. We had to figure out how to keep our candles from dripping, and now we know what to do about it. So I tucked that in there, and another scrap. It's the cute one with the ornaments on it. I didn't realize those ornaments had a name, Shiny Bright. My mom didn't use those, so uh, we had something else completely different on our tree. And I just recently learned that that's what those were called. That was the brand. Okay, I made a fabric flip here with a chenille piece that I, um, I ordered these long ago. So I like the red one. And this is a vintage sheet, probably from the 60s, picked up at um, a garage sale. And then this, the plaid. And then underneath, I just glued a piece to write, a place to write. So I like how that all layered up, and it just looks so cute, and the gold's... And the reds and greens pick up the colors in the background on that paper. We're coming to the end, this is our hors d'oeuvres. I should put that pickled beets recipe back here because that's what those are. 
but whoever gets the journal can do that. And then I love this page. I love the spread and the, the photography and the wild colors on that one too. Here's from a different, um, was this poetry or was it just, I can't remember, but I liked um, this picture here. So it's talking about vegetables. I know she's watering flowers, but you could pretend like she's watering her garden. Maybe there's veggies in it. But this was the title page in the book, and somebody had written a note. So, happy birthday, 1975. I had a spare um, piece from the wrapping paper, so I just backed her and made her into a tuck spot. And I'm just tucking in this. Another one of these index cards that I altered. That's just a scrap, so it looks pretty back there. And then this is another vintage gift tag in the correct color scheme. <laughs> I just thought that was super cute. This is just, um, it was an oversized like doily or whatever and I totally cut it wrong and I'm really mad at myself because I wanted it to be bigger but you still get the feeling so you could decorate with that elsewhere in the journal. Here's an actual vintage ad. And this is the final page. I did have to reinforce it because it had, um, it had pulled, and so you can kind of see, but I reinforced it on this side with the pole reinforcers, and then I backed it with a scrap from this cookie uh, cookie page. Use the trim. This is our last and final page, and I left it in there partly because it has the metrics and stuff on it, and it's just a nice final page. There's my little seal that I make. I didn't put my Idaho right side up. <laughs> Idaho is sleeping today. Anyway, and then here's the last page like I showed you. It is a little thick. I think if you wanted to, you could take out these, whatever they're called, page pushers. I don't know. What are they called? <laughs> anyway, there's one in the front and one in the back. But since I have, have this page here, and this kind of gets stuck on the pocket, you could probably take those out, and then it wouldn't, it wouldn't um, be too fat at all. So that is my journal. It's just the Retro 70s Inspired Christmas Journal. I don't have a fancier title than that, um, but <laughs> it's going to be listed in my Kofi shop. And so uh, my Kofi shop is linked down below. My Etsy shop is linked down below. I'm just really thrilled with how it turned out. I will point out on the cover there is a crease uh, it came that way. I did not do that. And it did have some um, fading, you know, sun fade on the spine. If if and when you get it, because I just liked the simplicity of the ribbon with the rickrack here to just kind of dress it up a little, I didn't really want to cover this up. But if you wanted to, whoever gets this, you could then maybe glue a doily here or, uh, you know, a big red doily or green doily or something to cover the spine or maybe add something down here to kind of help reinforce that. I think it'll be fine as you're using it as a journal. And this is peeking up over the top so when I mail it I'm probably going to pull it out and just lay it like that. So look for this in my Kofi shop which again is linked below. My Etsy shop is linked below. You can find uh, a variety of those vintage recipe cards. I think I have three or four different styles, the craft cards as well. And then if you guys are interested, I can turn this into a digital and I would put this in my Kofi shop, but I would want you know a lot of people to say, absolutely, we would love those. And then I will go ahead and upload that. But a lot of fun making this. And I think this kind of really helped pull the whole vibe together. I appreciate all of you watching today and joining me. I hope you're having a fantastic week. I will be back on Friday to share my other journal that I've been working on called The Christmas Story. And it also has kind of a 70s vibe with the artwork and things, but I'm, I'm trying to go with more of a natural feeling with the fibers and different things. And so that one should be ready to go as well. Okay, that is a wrap for today. Until next week, be inspired and do something creative today. I will talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye now.